Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank. And today I am checking out the Atomos Shogun with a number of different cameras and I wanted to look at some of the feature sets that have been built into the unit. I'm just gonna start off here with the Sony A7S because this is a really great combination. Primarily because we're not capable of recording 4K internally to the A7S. However, through the HDMI output of the camera, we are capable of sending that to the Shogun and recording it in 4K. Now, one of the interesting things that goes along with that is into the picture profiles of the A7S, we can choose different gamma responses. And gamma responses are simply how light is interpreted from the sensor to our image and ultimately to our recording. So we can choose different things uh, in there that allow us to get a what you see is what you get recording and pass that on in 4K to the Shogun. However, another choice is to capture in Sony's S-Log2. What S-Log2 allows us to do is to capture a wider dynamic range than we would in a traditional Rec. 709 recording. However, if we capture in log, we must do a post-process to it in order to remap that wide dynamic range and put it into Rec. 709. So what I have set up right now on my cart right now, I actually have a LUDed version of what I have captured in S-Log2 off the Shogun. And on the Shogun, I actually have a pre-LUDed or a S-Log2 display on the panel itself. And if you've ever looked at log uh, without any kind of correction on it, it looks a little washed out. So what I like to do is show you how to put a LUT into the Shogun because this is a very exciting that we can now create our own 3D LUTs and import them into the Shogun. Here's my color chart that I shot and this is an image that is sitting on the solid state drive of the Shogun. And what I've done is imported this clip into Resolve. And as you can see, it's a typical log image. There's, uh, the, the colors are all desaturated and the contrast is pretty washed out. So I'm gonna go into this, this place here. This is called a node and I'm going to do a, a conversion on it. So I'm gonna take it from S-Log2 to Rec. 709. And as soon as I do that, now you see the brightness has changed, contrast looks right, and your colors look right. So I'm gonna go through and I might make a few changes on here. Might take a little saturation out of it. Let me add a little more in. And I might play with the contrast a little bit. Add a little more to it. So let's say this is the look that we want to see on the Shogun. So I'm going to control click on this panel and I'm gonna to go to Generate 3D LUT Cube. This is the type of LUT and the format that the LUT will be accepted into the Shogun. So I click here, I'm gonna go down to my Shogun and I'm gonna call this A7S LUT. And I'm going to save it. And now that just got saved onto my solid state drive. So now I can close out Resolve eject the drive, put it back into the Shogun, and load it in. Now I want to start looking at that uh, LUT that I applied. So I'm going to go down to uh, this control on the lower left, the yellow one, and that opens up a display options button. And as you can see, number six is active right now, and there is currently no LUT uh, active on there. However, one through five, I've preloaded some LUTs on there. So if I press number one, for example, that's a Canon LUT. Uh, there is a uh, S-Log2 to 709. Same thing here, just a different variation. Keep in mind that there's no one definitive LUT. A LUT is just uh, one attempt at achieving a certain type of look. And the other thing to remember about this is this is a non-volatile act. In other words, I'm just applying this to the display. I'm not affecting what has been recorded to the media. So let's say I wanna go into number six and, or number seven, let's load in the LUT that I put on the solid state drive from Resolve. I'm going to press the 3D button here and it now detects one on the drive and it's the A7S LUT. I'm going to select it and there we go. On number seven now, I have the LUT that I generated in Resolve. And 
There is without the LUT, there it is with. I put my headphones on and I have my road mic here to discuss audio input into the Shogun. On the side of the unit, there is a multi-pin connector and it splits out into two three-pin female and two three-pin male XLR3s. And this allows us to put mic level or line level into the recorder. At this point, what I'm doing is I'm taking a signal from my microphone and I'm putting it into a sound device's mix pre D. The mix pre D is taking uh, mic level in and outputting uh, line level. So as many inputs as I can put on my mixer, I can now do a mix down and put it to the media. So this way you are getting high quality audio into your recording. There is one thing to be aware of when you do this type of recording. In other words, you are inputting a audio source that is separated from the video input. And that is there is going to be an offset between those two. So they have to be resynced. Now there is a control in the Shogun that allows you to compensate for that discrepancy. You must test this thoroughly uh, before going into a project to make sure your offset is proper. And it's also important to note that that offset will not uh, be the same camera to camera, even if it's the same model of camera. You must test this to the recorder to the specific camera you're going to be using. To access the audio menus, I'm going to tap on the lower left-hand corner where the audio meter is, and that's going to open up a window. Notice uh, all the tracks that we have uh, potentially available to us here. Notice one and two on the left-hand side are bouncing, but they're blue, and the record uh, dial is blue as well. That's the audio that's coming in from the onboard mic on the A7S through the HDMI. I am not recording that. What I am recording is uh, channel two is hot right now. You can see the red record next to it and you can see the green bar jumping up and down as I, uh, I speak here. This is the line level that's coming in from the Mix Pre D and will be recorded onto the media. I can tap on the options down here and you can see that I can scroll through different uh, level inputs. There's my line level input and you also have an output. You also have the ability right here for the audio delay when you are recording audio sources that are arriving separately from your video. I brought the FS7 in to illustrate a point of how flexible the Shogun can be across multiple camera platforms. So with my FS7, I have it set up for 4K internal recording, and I'm recording that video in log space, but I want to export that log to 1920 by 1080, simultaneously record an HD uh, version of the same footage, and I want to apply a custom LUT that I have to it. So this criteria, uh, it fits the bill for this configuration. All my media is going to share the same time code, so we can do a match back and post. And we also have basically timed dailies to look at at 1920 by 1080. Here's the Shogun receiving its signal from the FS7. I've used the HDMI input for this situation. You could use SDI1 or SDI2. Be aware that there's a lot of characters on this screen right now. Some of them are being generated by the Shogun and some of them are being generated by the FS7. When you're doing an external recording, it's very important to realize what you are recording to the media. At this point, if I was to record this, I would now be recording all the characters from the camera and that would be burned into my recording. So if, to alleviate that, I wanna go into my video menu and I'm gonna to go to my output setting HDMI target and I'm going to change it to recorder. As soon as I do that, you now see that the screen is clear of all the characters. I'm going to go back into the monitor setting just to show you some of the settings at the camera. If I go down to the system menu and I go to my record format, you'll see that internally I am recording 4K 24P. If I go back to the video menu and I go to my output format, you'll see under HDMI, 
I now have 1920 by 1080 selected. So this confirms that I am sending high definition out through the HDMI and I am recording 4K internally in the camera. Now I could do the same thing in terms of the SDI. I would simply roll up to here and I would activate the SDI at 1920 by 1080. That concludes our tour of the Atomo Shogun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.